consciousness. You are, you are consciousness, even your physical body. You attract, you attract energy to you. These are little energy forms. All the time, you're doing it right now, but you're not conscious of it. And that causes a lot of confusion because it's happening. You are creating your reality. You're creating a reality of whatever it is, of uh, a reality of maybe suffering, a reality of absolute immersion into this singular dimension, which is kind of unnatural because you're really multidimensional, but you're creating it. Your family, your health, all the rest of that's all being created. But where is it being created from? That's the question. Uh, that's the, the big question of the day. Where is it being created from? Let's explore, because it's coming from multiple places. You are creating, you are attracting the energies to you that create your reality from your mind. We'll call it mind uh, thought. It's not very potent. It, it's not very powerful. You can sit here right now and have a thought, a mind thought, and uh, say that you want uh, something. Think of uh, a relationship. Some of you are, are looking for that. I want a relationship. I'm thinking of a relationship. I'm seeing a relationship. That has a little bit of potency, and you're going to get a, a sprinkle of little, of little energies that come in to start making that happen. But they're not very dynamic. They're not very potent. It's just a thought. If you were to put a meter like on your thoughts, it would move just a little bit, but not much. And that's where there's a lot of frustration with the some of the ways the law of attraction is taught, or some of the ways when they talk about the power of the mind, uh, and people talk about mind control, it is actually very inefficient, very archaic. So mind thought has a certain potency to it. There is another level called emotion, and I'll call it emotion drama. A lot more potent than the mind thought. It's what is at work in most everybody's life. That's how their reality is being created from emotion drama. If you remember, recall what I have said before. Emotion is the mind's cheap attempt, artificial attempt, to feel. The mind itself absolutely cannot feel. It cannot have uh, feelings, which means a sensory perception. So it created this little thing called emotions to make it feel like it could, to make it feel like it was the boss. And in it, the, the emotions are not from your heart. They're not from your spirit at all. They're from here. But there's this weird trick. You think that you think that the mind is one thing, and you think emotions are another. They're really actually quite the same. Artificial consciousness that comes out of emotion drama has a way of really attracting energy. Therefore, the mind, with its artificial subset of emotions, thinks, see, emotions are real, and, and I'm very emotional, because it can attract huge quantities of energy. Emotions attract energy. Drama, which are emotions in high gear, really attract energy. That's why so many people drop drama bombs, because it brings in a rush of energy, a rush of energy, and they can't live without it. So there is a tremendous amount of energy that is attracted into drama. And most people are literally stuck in this in this creator uh, capability. They're not conscious of it. They go from one emotional encounter to another, one drama situation to another. And it's uh, at some strange level they are feeling like, like things are happening. Well, they are, but it's not 
conscious. And then how many people say, well, I don't know how all this works, so I acquiesce to destiny and fate. Then there is the, the next level, which I will call, uh, I'll call true heart. True heart. That is when you really start getting into, into your real feelings. A lot of you have been feeling them lately. That inner knowingness. And a true heart can only come from in here. Drama, emotion, uh, energies, and, and uh, false consciousness, mind thought. And I can intermingle with everybody else's, but true heart comes from right here. The problem is that it's been a long time since you've been in true heart. It's been a long time since you've looked inside, and you don't really trust it. You're, you, humans in general, are still very much prone to having things directed for them, uh, having, having things, people telling them what they can and can't do. So this is an underutilized resource, but it's there. And this true heart, as you know from having a few cathartic breakthrough experiences, has huge, huge amounts of energy to it. Uh, it attracts, attracts huge amounts of energy. You can have a single experience, and it can absolutely alter your life. So here you are as a consciousness being, drawing energy into your reality. You draw that energy in as we, as we showed in our diagram last month. You draw it in, you attract it. Uh, there is a law of attraction, but be careful. <laughs> Because the law of attraction, as most people understand it right now, is very mental. Very mental. The true law of attraction comes, and, and the ability to create reality and to manifest, comes from passion and desire. What are the original, what are the core passions and desires for any souled being? So the desire. The passion of the soul is to know thyself, express thyself, come back to thyself, and evolve thyself into a, a consciousness and a reality unknown to self up until this point. So there's a lot of discussion. Well, what, what then creates reality? Well, as, as I mentioned before, the driving forces are desire, passion, joy, and simplicity. Thank you. These things, these things create. They, they actually are creating a reality, but you're just not aware of it. These are, these are true uh, motivators or true. Uh, the true dynamics behind creation of your reality. So the, the false <coughs> motivators, the false dynamics, where a lot of people get very – well, where you get confused, the ones that aren't working right now, these false motivators that, again, come from the mind, not from the true heart, and they are force. They are power, and they are efforting. Effort. Efforting. Efforting. Using force to create reality. Using power to maintain your identity, to, to create reality. Efforting. That is such a hypnotic overlay and such an old belief system. Efforting. I, I again, we, we talk at all levels most of the time, and there's still part of your humanness that believes it has to effort to to accomplish something. At the end of the day, you take a look at yourself and say, "How much efforting did I do?" And therefore, you give yourself a little grade. It was a good day. It was a bad day. 
based on the amount of effort expended. Well, it would be like saying to the hamster on the wheel, how many miles did you go today? None. None at all. So these are old ways, very old ways of trying to create reality. It doesn't work very well because it's mental, because it doesn't have desire, passion, and joy, because it doesn't allow for true expression and expansion. Yes, there is a spiritual law, which is also a law of physics, called the law of attraction. You are a magnet, and you are attracting everything into your life to support what you are choosing, whether it is consciously or unconsciously. Everything that happens to you in any given day is based on the law of attraction. Now, it's frustrating because often you don't realize that you're creating it, or worse yet, you give somebody else the authority. You say, that's not me creating it, it's coming from the outside. But in reality, it is your own law of attraction. Now, here's where we're a bit concerned when dealing with this, this attraction, dealing with your own creations. Humans understand a part of this attraction theory or, or principle, but then they go mental with it, and they go little, and they go human. And they say, but if this law of attraction works, I will attract to me $100. I will attract to me a more youthful appearance. I will attract a better job. I will attract a very sensual partner in my life. And they go, the list goes on and on, and we've actually become a bit frustrated on this side to see that this whole concept of the law of attraction is being very, very limited because the human self is saying, my needs first. The human self is basically pushing the spirit or the soul self aside and saying, I have to have all of these little things. I have to attract them into my life. As you know, it generally doesn't work very well. And then you become frustrated and you think that others are experts in the law of attraction, but you're just a schmuck. <laughs> and you get very confused and then you have to go to more courses and get more therapy and you go to more psychics and readers trying to figure out why you're not attracting things into your life. It's simple because it is mental and it is human. In the true energy of the law of attraction, you don't have to worry about the little things. They take care of themselves. And now we go back to the whole principle of balancing. You don't need to try to attract $100. You already have it. You just don't realize it. You don't need to make a mental exercise of attracting the right kind of partner or whatever it happens to be on your long Christmas list of little human things that you're trying to attract. The law of attraction is really about the attraction of the soul, of your soul self or your spirit, whatever you want to call it. It is the attraction of the needs, the desires, or more than anything, the expression of consciousness. Consciousness. That takes precedence over everything. Your consciousness, in a way, actually doesn't care about your little human needs. It doesn't care about your little human self. Because it understands that that's just temporary. The little human self was never designed to rule the kingdom. But the little self, human self has um, gotten a little bit out of control, as we would say and has pushed the soul needs, the consciousness needs out of the way. Desires, we should say, are really quite simple. It is to expand and express in a constant state of expression. That's what consciousness loves to do, because through expression, it celebrates life, whether it's life in a human body or life in the non-physical realms. But it's a desire to continually express. It's the song of creation. 
and the consciousness spirit has a continual desire to expand, to feel more, as you would say, or to know more, but not an intellectual knowing. It is a knowing of knowingness. I am that I am. And when the little human gets in and circumvents it with puny little needs like a hundred dollars or, or whatever that happens to be, it creates this type of confusion and this type of feeling of being lost or being inept. When you truly understand the law of soul attraction or consciousness attraction, You'll never again have to expend your energy on the little things, on those little annoying details. They're just going to be there. The law of attraction is not a mental exercise. It's not visualization or affirmation. Those are mental exercises. and They're going to eventually get you very, very frustrated and, and again, believing that you're not a creator. Feel. Sense and choose what it is that your soul or your consciousness chooses to attract. Sitting here, watching in online, you're a magnet. And whether you think you're doing anything or not, there's a tremendous flow of energies into you, through you. You are attracting just the perfect thing at the perfect time, whether your human self realizes it or not. Constant attraction. You are like a magnet, but a magnet that works different than your physical magnets on Earth for for the opposites attract in your magnets on Earth. But the type of magnet that you are, the likenesses attract. If you feel disempowered, disempowered things will come to respond to you. You'll be surrounded by disempowered people or people who use their power to take yours away. You're asking for it. Like responds to like. If there is a lack of abundance in your life, it is because you are feeling that you are not worthy. You are energizing yourself or spiritually magnetizing yourself and you bring it into your life. Everything around you and everything in your life is a direct, literal response to who you are. It's not being inflicted on you. You are bringing it in. You are manifesting it. That is how strong and powerful creator that you are. If you don't like something, if you don't like things in your life or any of your life, you can change it. How do you do that? First, you acknowledge that you are ready for a change and you're willing to go through what it takes, which all of you have. Then, Chambra, then, Chambra, you begin to change how you are feeling on the inside. You begin taking a look at at how you are creating these things. Are you playing the role of the victim? If you are, you will always have victim experiences happen to you. Are you playing the role of the disempowered? And you always have things that come into your life that take your power away. It is time for your freedom from those things. It's time for you to understand you're not, you're no longer bound by them. You can change them. Years ago, Tobias gave the example. You get on a bicycle. A typical way of doing things, you get on the bicycle and then you start pedaling. And you start sweating a little bit, you start breathing heavier, and you ride through the landscape. You ride down the streets, up the hills, through the village or wherever else, along the uh, river. You're pedaling, you're exerting, and the landscape is going by you. That is duality, that is old, and it doesn't need to exist that way anymore. Now you get on the bike and you just sit there. You do not paddle. You do not move. Even the bicycle really doesn't have to do anything, and the landscape moves. You are stationary. The landscape moves. Now the nice thing about this is that you don't have to do anything other than receive, and you're really bad at receiving. Scale 1 to 10, you get about a 0.5 for your ability to receive, truly. And if that were not so – I do not make this up, and I'm not just saying it to insult you – if if that were not so, we wouldn't be having the discussion. 
and we wouldn't be in situations that are a little embarrassing. I'm getting people mad at me again today, but we wouldn't be having these discussions. You're not so good at receiving. This concept, very, very real concept, it comes to you. You get on that old bike, or new bike, you get on that bike, and you just sit back. It all comes to you. It's not linear. It's not like going down the road anymore where the landscape just starts moving while, while you're just sitting here. It's not linear. The exact perfect thing comes to you. Perfect, not, not based on what God thinks is perfect, because God really doesn't care, or some other being, or your, anything else. Perfect for you, by you. And it comes to you. Take a deep breath. You get on that bike, and it comes to you. It comes to you. Whatever you need, huge volumes of energy, but energy that will manifest in a variety of different things. You're used to searching for things. In this shift, you don't have to. It comes to you. Oh, you're going to feel a bit uncomfortable with it, saying, "But, but, 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 I have to do something." No, just let it come to you. Sets the mind on fire. The mind thinks, "Well, no, so I have to do something." No, you just take a deep breath. Let it come to you. That's all you have to do. You don't even have to think in terms of if it's a new car, a new house, any of that. It just comes to you. It's going to be so simple, so simple that. For a split moment, you're going to think that you didn't work hard enough to earn it. You're going to feel a little guilty. You're going to want to have a way of measuring how much you give yourself. Don't. Take a deep breath. Let it come to you. Unrestricted. Can you let it come to you? Not go searching for it. Can you let it come to you? Easily, gracefully, take a deep breath. It comes. It comes. Don't think in terms of paying a bill. Don't think in terms of just a small human need. Let that energy flow in. Don't wrestle with it. Don't wonder if you're doing it right or wrong. Just let it come to you. It's that simple. I exist, therefore, energies are here. It's that simple. I am, therefore, it is. Grace is receiving energies. Without question, without doubt, grace. Master allows energies to serve him without question, without question, period. That's grace, pure, simple, beautiful. These energies are here. They'll come to you. Allow them. They'll come to you if you stop playing the show, the game, the illusion. They'll come right now if you're in grace. So the question is: Can you receive? Will you receive? Will you receive? Without question.